Hello everyone, Computer Networking Geek here again. It's time for another tutorial. Uh, last time we tackled how to install Kali Linux into VirtualBox. And this time I'm going to show you how to install server roles and get uh, Active Directory set up. So let's get right into it. As you can see, I already have uh, Windows Server already installed. I use Windows Server 2012 R2. Now, once you've got it installed, first thing you're going to want to do is go down here to this icon. That's your server manager. Go ahead and click on local server. Now, one of the first things we're going to do before we even get started on installing a server roles is you're going to want to go ahead and change your computer name from the default. It's one that automatically assigns itself. That's really easy to do. It's just like on a client system. Right click start, go to system, and then right here where it says computer name, domain, and workgroup settings, just click change settings. So, rename computer, click change here. Computer name, I'm just going to call this, uh, let's see, test server one. You do have to restart the computer for that change to take effect, but we won't do that just yet. Now we're going to go to Manage, Add Roles and Features, click Next. You can install roles based on the server itself or for remote desktop. We're going to do role based first. Go ahead and click Next, this step. Now the two roles we're going to start out with. Uh, you're going to want Active Directory Domain Services. And when this comes up, just click Add Features, because it's going to require all of those to work. Also, we're going to install Windows Deployment Services, so we can handle Pixie booting, things like that. Okay? So go ahead and click Next. Let's see, Features. Generally, there are some features you want to install here. Uh, yeah, uh, SNMP, that's a good one, so we can handle remote logging, remote management, things like that. That should be good for now. Go ahead and click Next. Click Next again. And yes, we, we will set up DCP and DNS uh, in another video, but for now we're just going to install these two. Click Next. Click next again at this uh, this step. Restart the server if required. And go ahead and click install. And this will take just a few minutes. So give it about 10, 15 minutes or so. Depending on your hardware, it might take a little bit longer. But generally, this shouldn't take long. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let those roles install. And I'll come back to you in just a few minutes. Okay, so we got our two roles installed, our Active Directory and our deployment services. Now, as soon as you've rebooted and you've got your server manager back up, go ahead and come up here and click the flag. That's your notifications. And then click Promote the Server to a Domain Controller. That'll launch the Active Directory wizard. Now, the thing you're going to want to select here is Add a New Forest. We're starting from scratch. We don't have a domain set up yet. Uh, so basically, we're starting a new a new forest. Now these other two, if you already have a domain and you want to have another domain controller for uh, redundancy or fallover, you would select this option. Or if you wanted to add a secondary domain to an existing domain and make a forest, you could do that right here. But we don't have a domain yet, so we're going to start from scratch. And I'm just going to name this netlab.local. Now you can name it whatever you want, just make sure it ends in .local. Click Next.
These can be set at the default, as well as these. Now the password you're going to type in is the same one you use to log in as the administrator. And hit enter. And it's letting me know that there's not a DNS server or role install. Now, the way Active Directory works, it relies heavily on DNS to, to uh, behave correctly and to work. So when a client machine contacts your what's going to be our domain controller to request a login to their domain, it uses DNS to um, resolve the names, things like that. Uh, we're going to install the DNS and the DCP in, in the next video. So we'll go ahead and click next after this. You can leave the NetBIOS name at the default. Uh, change it if you feel like it, but I usually just leave it. Go ahead and click next. Leave these at the default. You don't really need to change these. You can if you want, but I generally don't. Go ahead and click next. And then just do a quick review of the settings you chose. If you're happy with them, go ahead and click next. Then it's just going to do a quick check, make sure everything's set correctly. Okay, everything passed, fine. It's always going to do these the first time you install. And it's complaining that we don't have a static IP address set. And we will set that, we're just not going to set it just yet. As well as you don't have a DNS server installed, but we're going to do that in the next video. So. After you go through all that, go ahead and click install. And that will install the Active Directory role. I really like the way Windows Server is laid out. It's very easy to administrate it and manage it. As, as you can see, it's not terribly hard to get a role installed, or even the, these wizards actually guide you through a lot of the uh, process. And uh, in the next video when we set up DNS and DHCP, it's, it's pretty easy. Okay, it's installing and creating directories. Alright, I'm going to take a quick break here while it finishes up installing uh, Active Directory. I'll come back in just a few minutes. Okay, we're back. Uh, when I had it rebooted uh, again, it's usually going to reboot when you install a major role such as Active Directory. And the cool thing is I actually forgot that it did this. Since we didn't have the DNS role installed, Windows Server went ahead and installed that as well. So. That's nice and convenient. Good job, Windows. Okay, now that we've got Active Directory installed, we can go to Tools, Users and Computers. And this is where you're going to set up all your accounts, your user accounts, your computer names. Everything is all in this area right here. That's our domain. You have your built-in users, and generally you want to leave those alone. Windows doesn't generally like you changing those. We have computers. Of course, we don't have any computers yet because this is the only thing that we have running at the moment. We only have one domain controller, this server here. And then users. These are all the built-in users as well. Now, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to make a group. So right-click anywhere over here or even over here. Go over to New, then click Group. And we're just going to imagine that this is a company, so we'll just say this is the sales group. Always make sure these groups are set to security and global. Just makes it easier that way. Domain local should be fine in this case, but global gives us more flexibility. And security lets you be, it, it uh, enables you to set NTFS permissions 
uh, in the security tab. If you don't select security and select distribution, you cannot set file permissions. So make sure you select security whenever you make a group. Go ahead and click OK. There's our group, and I'll go ahead and make another one. HR for human resources. Okay, so we have our two groups. And let's just make two users. Go over to new user. Uh, let's just do John D. Doe. Again, this can be anything you want. Now, when you start naming your users, they have a user logon name. And you generally want this to be the same among all the users. Generally, what I do is I do the first letter in their first name and then their last name. So, jdoe at netlab.local. That's generally what I do. You can do it any way you want. You could do it like John D. But generally, I go John, or first letter in their first name and then their last name. That all looks good. And that's actually going to be the login name they use to log in to the domain once we have our, our workstation set up. Go ahead and click Next. Set a password for them. And always have this check. User must change password at next login. That's a must for security. No matter what, you want to make sure that it's just not good, for example, if you if you were on a job site or if you were on your job doing this, it's not good for the administrator to know the password of who's logging in. So you have to set user must change password at next login. Just get into the habit of leaving that checked. Generally, you're not going to do user cannot change password unless, for example, it's a kiosk system. Same with password never expires. Account disabled is nice. You can set up an account ahead of time. So like if you have new employees coming in, if you're the network administrator, you can check that and just enable the account once they actually become hired. Or if, for example, they were going on vacation, you could disable it for the time they were gone and then just re-enable it when they get back. It just makes security uh, tighter and easier that way. Once you've set the password, go ahead and click Next. Make sure that's all set correct. And finish. And then we have a new user. Now here's what we can do. Double click the user. You can set more details. You can set address, telephone, organization. We don't really have to worry about that. Account is generally where you're going to go. And that's where you can set all the options. You can unlock it. So if you need to access it for some reason, that's all here. You can choose encryption if this account is going to support encryption. So there's a lot of nice settings in here. We'll check those out at another time. Login hours is really cool. This is also a good thing for security. The, the general reason you would go here is you only want the employee to be able to use their account while they're actually working. So you could set it to where on Monday through Friday you could set it from oh, that actually be in the morning. You could set it from 8 to 6 for example because they're not going to work past 6. Then you just click OK. Oh, didn't take it. <laughs> oh, okay, I see. I remember. I forgot. It's a, okay, so you just highlight everything and you click Login Denied. And then on the days you and hours you want to allow, you highlight it like so. So our, our work days are going to be, eh, we'll just say Sunday through Friday, 8 to 6. Then login permitted. And that is the only time that that user can use that account. If it's past the work day, like past 6 p.m., and it's on into the night and the mornings, no one will be able to log in with this account because it will automatically be disabled after work hours are over. That's just something you always want to set for security. We don't have to really worry about it here. So we're just going to set login permitted all the time, just to make it easier for us, since it's a lab. But if you were on the job as a network administrator, you'd want to set this for every account. Go ahead and click OK. Now, member of, we're going to add this user to one of the groups we just created. So click Add. I'm going to add him to Sales. So type in name, Enter. Now he's in the Sales group. 
The reason you make groups is it's easier to set your file permissions in, inside the security tab. So rather than just going to each individual user and setting NTFS permissions, you just set permissions for that entire group all at once, and then the hierarchical permissions will scale down to each user. It's much easier that way. Instead of having to go to each user can individually and setting them over and over and over again, just set them for a whole group, and that makes things a lot easier and saves you a lot of time in the long run. So we'll make another user. Call this one Tom Tom T. Smith. T. Smith at netlab.local. Next. And always, always make sure you set a different password each time you make a user. That's just good practice. Okay, make sure that's checked. Click next, finish. And I'm going to go to his, his account, go to member of, add, and he's going to be in HR. There we go. And that's just the absolute basics of Act Directory, but that gives you an idea. You make your groups first, then you make users and add them to the groups as you need to. Oh, another thing to notice here, the guest account is always disabled by default. Just like on a client system, it's no different on Windows Server. You never, never, never want to enable the guest account. Another thing you want to do is you want to rename the administrator account. So I'm just going to name, rename it to uh, just another name. Let's say Sam Spade. Because you never want to leave the administrator account at that name. Because if someone compromises your security, all they have to do is just find administrator. And that's the account they're going to try to compromise. So. Always rename that. It just makes security that much better. So, spade at netlab.local. Okay. Play Sam S. Spade. Okay. I don't know why I did that, but anyway. Sam Spade. Oh. There we go. Click OK. There we go. And the administrator account has been renamed, so if someone does manage to compromise your network, they won't know which one is the administrator account. Which one has the administrator rights? They don't know. So that's just another step you can take. And again, that is the basics of Active Directory. That's how you make groups. That's how you make users. That's how you rename the administrator account. And that, I think, will wrap it up for this video. We'll tackle next time setting up DNS and DHCP because those two are required to set up uh, the deployment services. So again, thanks for watching. And if you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And we will see you next time.